Today we're gonna to start working on our game UI. I'm gonna add the lap counter to the top right corner of the screen, but to get it to where I want it to work, we're gonna to have to add a custom event and then go into our global script and add a method there. So let's jump in and get started. All right, so the last time we left off, we have the game set up so that when we drive around and we cross this first one here, that's our lap counter. And we have it sending a message out down here. We want to do a little bit more than that. We want it to actually show up in the corner over here. And I'll go through, keep going through. Let's actually set it so when we hit our max lap counts, uh, the player stops moving as well. Now let's go around one more time. And let's set it that once we've completed three laps, we're done. All right, let's jump in then. So I'll create a new script. I'm going to call this one custom signals. And I'll save it in the same folder as my global. I'm gonna double click that to open it up. And well, we should be used to this by now. <laughs> we get rid of everything. Now the two signals that I wanna set up for are the lap over, which will trigger inside of global a method that will go ahead and increase the, the lap counter. Then our UI can automatically detect that and um, increase the actual display force. And the second one's gonna be the race over. So once we've completed a certain amount of laps, our well, our car just won't be able to move. Think of it in Mario Kart where, you know, once you finish that last lap, their computer takes over. Maybe we'll get a little bit further into that. But for now, we're just going to make it so the player can accelerate. So let's go ahead. We'll jump into our global script. We are going to have to set up a variable to hold a reference to our custom scripts that's inside of our game. And then inside of our ready function, we'll have to go out, find that node, sign it to our custom scripts variable. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm going to change this private int max uh, laps. I'm going to change this to our property. And now that we've changed it over to our property, I'm going to set it up inside of ready uh, to have that default value to be equal to three. Now we are going to have to change the lap counter around a bit, but this is where I'm going to go ahead and uh, well set it up so that it emits that signal for us. So here's our new lap counter. Uh, we'll start off when we have the regular get. So if they ever need to get the lap counter with the values at, we can go ahead and grab that. This is specifically just for the UI. And then we have a set property for it now. The first thing we're gonna do is increase the counter. We wanna make sure we do this before we emit the, the signal because we're gonna have our GUI when it receives that signal that it's been emitted, that uh, we go and grab whatever the current lap counter is at and display it. And if we haven't done this beforehand, it's gonna display the lap counter before we've actually increased. So if we're actually on lap three, it's gonna say lap two. Of course, this, depending on how you set it up, might be what you want. So you might wanna emit the signal first. Play around with it, check it out. Reverse these two lines, see if you can get it the way you want. I'm gonna go and print out the, well, just the debug text down inside of the console because I like to see that stuff. And then I also wanna make sure that, well, if we've gone ahead and maxed the laps that we're supposed to have done, go ahead and emit that signal that the race is over. This will well, stop our player from moving around. Let's go ahead and start making that UI. We'll save this off, jump back into Godot. Now I'm gonna make it right here inside of our track one. And then after I'm done, I'm gonna move it to its own child or at least its own scene later. I can't remember if we've done that already inside of this game. If not, this is how I do it. So I'm gonna come in, select the track, hit the plus button, and we're gonna add a control. The control we want is just the pop-up, or just the, the basic one, the zero here, the one that has a little green circle. I'm gonna move this down a bit. The only thing I'm adding in this video is the display for the lap counter. And to get that, just make sure you have control selected. We're gonna hit the plus and I'm gonna grab a label. There we go. And of course it looks like a little tag, a little label. And I'm gonna name this just so I know exactly what it is. So I'm gonna say LBL so I know that this was a label in case you know the icon didn't give it away for me. And I'll just say lap counter. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna change control over to game UI. Great, these are the only two things I need right now. And I'm gonna move this out to its own scene now. So I'm gonna right click right here where we have save branch as scene. Click that, it's gonna ask you, hey, where do you wanna save it? I'm gonna save it inside of my scenes folder. I'll just save it here. And because I've named it, it gets the name of whatever the branch was that I selected. I'll hit save. And now we have the little scene icon. I can click it and it opens it up in its own scene. Now, I don't have any custom fonts or anything. I'll play around with those later. For now, I just want to set the lap counter up. I'm going to select the, the label. So let's give the label a little bit of text here. I'm going to come in and say lap. And then we'll start off one of three, just so we can see it. So the first thing I want to do is take the size of my UI, which we can see by the orange box here, and make it fill everything. 
So we'll take, well, make sure you have the UI selected. We'll come up to layout, we'll select it and do full rec. That'll take up the full screen that it's gonna be displayed on. The next thing I wanna do is grab my LBL lap counter and I'm gonna move that to the top right. There we go. And that puts it right in the top right. I want a little bit of an offset. So let's come down. Uh, I'm gonna set the alignment to be to the right. I'm gonna select uppercase just so all the letters are always capitalized. Now it did shift a bit and we can just drag and drop it exactly where we want, but I wanna do it through the inspector. So I'm gonna redo this top right. That'll recenter it perfectly for me. I'll go ahead and give it some margin. I'm gonna do 10 from the top and then I'm just gonna take it and drag it just about 10 to the right. There we go, negative 10. Let's bring this back to 10. And now I want it sitting right about there. When we come in, we add some custom fonts. We'll play around with the anchoring instead later. And we can do that percentage wise. So let's save this scene off. We'll jump back into our track. Let's start the game up. I don't know if that's actually gonna be visible. Might be too small, but we'll start it up. We'll take a look. It needs to be bigger. We'll make it bigger. Oh yeah, <laughs> needs to be bigger. And we do have one error here. Uh, what is it? Ah, we haven't set up uh, custom scripts to be global. We'll do that before we adjust the size. So let's come into project settings. We gotta come over to our auto loads and we have to add our custom signals. I always call mine CS. I'll go ahead and add it. And I put that above my global, especially since my global needs to make sure that it's already loaded before I can call it. We'll save that off. I just wanna make sure I have no more errors. I guess I could have just hit the build button. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead, we'll save that off. And it's at this point I realized my audio kicked out and I don't have any audio for the rest of this video. So we're gonna quickly redo it. Well, we don't have to do any of the script. So where I left off is our UI. We've got it set up, it should be the right size and it should be in the top corner, but it, it's not. Why? And it has to do with the way we've kind of got it set up. So let's jump in and take a look. So if we take a look at our car, I guess we'll turn this one off out here that we have. I'm gonna jump into our car scene. I'm gonna select that camera 2D and I'm gonna add a game UI to it. Now, if we take a look, it's dead center and it should be all around this purple area here. I'm gonna come over to the rect and even though we had set it in its own scene to be 1024 by 600, this is the default size that Godot has for its scenes. Ours isn't, so let's set it. 1024 by 600. All right, great, if we zoom in, uh, it fills a quarter of the screen and it looks kind of like it's supposed to be right, but it's just too small. Now the size difference is because our camera 2D has a scale of two on it. That means we have to take our game UI and there's a couple of ways to do it. I generally like just to scale it by two. And of course, when we come out here, it's right, but now it's not centered. And the first thing you usually think about is, hey, I'll just come in here and center it. That generally doesn't quite get you where you want it to be either because it's going off the original size. So, hey, what about top left? Nope, that doesn't work. Bottom right? Well, that does work, but I will usually just go ahead and since we're doing two by two, just do the negative of whatever the size is on both of them, and I'll get you there as well. Depending on the zoom you have on your camera, you might have to fidget around with this and you might have to manually type it in. But that does work. If I save it, come into my track, we'll save this off, we'll run it. Uh, it's in the right spot up here. And in our game, it's in the right spot. But if we try to drive around, every time our car turns, well, there goes the UI. <laughs> not exactly what we want. Uh, maybe for your game, but not for the one I'm making. And that is why I don't want it on the car itself. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. Actually, we can just cut it. Come back into, I'm gonna save it here. Come back into track one, get rid of our old one. I'm gonna select our car and paste. That will put it in the exact right spot wherever our car is on the scene. I don't want it to be a child of the car though. I want it to be a child of the track. So I'm gonna put it there. And of course, when I start it up now, everything's in the right spot. But when I drive, it doesn't follow me. Well, that's what we're gonna do next. So let's add a script. Now I've already done this script. So let's grab it and put it on. Let's drag, drop it on, and let's open it up and take a look. Well, let's save it off first. Actually, did that save it over here as well? It did not. I want it to be in the actual game UI scene as well. So we'll remove it from here. I'll save it. I'm gonna grab it in here. 
and then drag and drop it. I want to make sure it's on all game UIs that I put in. We'll save it, we'll come out here, and it shows here. So let's open it up and take a look to see what I have going on. Now I need a target to follow, and take note that this is an export, so it's going to show up inside of the inspector. I've called it follow target, and it's of type node path. In Godot 4, we don't need to use the node path. We can specifically say what type of object we're trying to follow. But for now, we actually have to give it a node path. And this will be the path to the node in our, our scene. We'll take a look at that when we jump back inside of Godot. Uh, the next part is the actual label that we want to have for our lap counter. And then we are going to be listening to global and also for our custom signals. So we need references for those as well. And then down here, we're going to say, hey, whatever this node is that we're supposed to follow, I want to save it as the actual object itself uh, to the variable follow. It's going to be a type car. So let's set all that up. So just like for the other ones, we've gone out, we've grabbed our global, we've gone, uh, we've grabbed our custom signals, and then we're going to connect to our custom signals. And we're going to listen for the lap over event. And when it goes off, I want this script to call the update lap counter. And then I need to get a reference to our label counter. So I'll go out, I grab that and take note that this is relevant to its current spot in the hierarchy. So the script is attached here. And I just want to grab a child called LBL lap counter. And that's what I'm doing here. And then the follow I'm setting to whatever it was we had up here for the node path for the following target. I'm saying, hey, go out and get the car that's attached to it. Let's come down to our process. Now process goes off every frame, just like update in Unity. So all we're doing is calculating a new position based on where the thing is that we're following, in this case, our car, and then we're just assigning it in. And then the update for our lap counter, we're taking the, the text property of our label, and we're just appending in lap plus the lap counter from global. Then we're gonna append on the little slash, and then the max lap. Now, here's a little bit of homework for you. Take a look at string format. There's a better way to do this. Do that. <laughs> All right, so we've got that done. Let's save it. We'll come back inside of Godot. Let's go back into track. We got to build it. Click off game UI, click back on, and there's our follow target. So this is that node path. We click on it. It shows us every node that we have here in our scene. I'm just going to select the car because that's what we want to follow. We hit play. Now it follows. And when our car turns, the UI doesn't. Now, because we did have that little bit of an outage with the audio and I re-recorded just to make sure I did not miss anything that we updated during the scripts, I'm just going to quickly go over them. If yours is running perfectly. Great. So we've got two signals inside of custom signals. And of course, pause this as I go through if you need to. We have our lap counter, max last, custom signals. We've set up custom signals. Inside of here, we have our max lap property set to be three at the start. Inside of our lap counter, we've got the getter so that we can just grab the lap counter as needed to update our display. Then we have the set, which all we're gonna do is just increment, emit a signal, output some text to the console. Then we're gonna go and check to see if we're greater than max lap and have race over. We could do a plus one here. The display is a little bit better, but I'm fine. Well, I know we're going to be tweaking this later on down the road anyway, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm going to come back into our car, and we did set it so that the car stopped going after the race over is fired. If we take a look here. I did add the private custom signals here. We've gone ahead, we've set it up, and then I've hooked up a new event here and also a new value here. So when we are going to connect to this race over signal, when it goes off, we're going to have this script called the toggle input, which just turns the input off. Later on, I'm going to have this set up so it's an actual true toggle so we can turn it on and off as need be. For now, the only time this thing's going to be called is when the race is actually over. So I just need it to turn off for now. And if we come down to the input, here's where I'm checking for it. If it's currently set to false, no turned off, then I'm going to return. I'm not going to do any of these calculations here. So I'm essentially skipping all the input. All right. So that's all the changes we made to uh, well, the whole project in this video. I'll go ahead and leave a link to GitHub to where you can download the project to, well, take a look at it if you want. Or if you want, go ahead and type it all out. The best way to learn is to actually just do it yourself.
But anyway, let me know down below if there's any specific uh, features you want to see implemented. If there's enough people want them, we can go ahead and add them. Or let me know what you want added next. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Don't forget the graph.